today we are in my Porsche Cayenne Turbo 955 and I thought, why not give you an overview? The Porsche Cayenne's been around for nearly 20 years now and they've managed to shift 1 million units. And what makes that figure even more remarkable is that in the time they have created 1 million Cayennes, they did that in a third of the time it took them to build 1 million 911s. So it's most definitely a monumental success for Porsche then. So let's find out why, shall we? So let's cut to the chase with the badge. With this being the turbo model, this was the hottest variant you could get in their lineup at the time. So under the bonnet, we have the masterpiece of an engine, which is the M48.50 twin turbo powered V8 engine. Not only was it really pretty to look at, it was also pretty quick in terms of power as well. We have around 450 horsepower to our disposable and a very lovely 620 newton meters of torque. That will get you to the 0-60 sprint around 5.6 seconds and we'll get onto a top speed of 165 miles an hour in a thing that is very, very bulbous and big. But you're gonna need that extra grunt because this car tips the scales at just under 2.4 tons. But having said that, even with how much it weighs, it's quite remarkable how quick this car is, even by today's standards. Okay, let's try out the 5.6 0-60 time. Uh, nothing's around me, so let's just punt our foot. Yeah, that's 16, a rather brisk 5.6 seconds. That felt very quick, very nice indeed. Speaking of weight, how does that impair the handling? Now, this is where it gets quite remarkable because for a big, heavy SUV, you, hand, you expect it to handle like a very big cargo ship, which it doesn't. That's the very pleasantly surprising feature about this car. With it being a Porsche as well, I suppose it does give you that aspect of great handling, which, Surprisingly, it actually does. Like, the steering is fantastic. I really love the steering. It's very weighted, but feels very good and gives me a tremendous amount of feedback. And as for body roll, there's hardly any. It's quite remarkable how they managed to do this. Bars has given this a very aggressive drive the other day and it managed to go around corners relatively well. And with it being wet and windy today, it's not the most grippiest of days, but with it having all wheel drive, it inspires me confidence to go around corners relatively well, which it really does. Down here we have some settings for our shocks and we have sport, normal and comfort and if I'm going to be transparent with you I've left it in normal the whole time because it's perfectly capable on that setting. As for transmission we have the six speed Tiptronic gearbox and it's a little slow and lethargic I mean if we do a kick down here. That one was actually quite good but for the most part it does take a bit of persuasion to get it going. It's quite slow and lethargic. I mean, sometimes the gap is so vast you can get another gearbox inside it. However, if you do want some fun with the gearbox, you can knock the lever to the side and use the buttons and the steering wheels which select which gear you want to be. So um, right now I'm in third. Maybe I want to be in second for a bit more punch. And you can have a bit of fun with the gearbox itself like that. Um, it's not instantaneous with the shifts on the buttons and the steering wheel, but it's all right. Perhaps this car needs a gearbox service, which might help the shift to be a little faster and the, down, and the kick downs to go a little faster too. As for the looks, I really love the way this car looks. I think it's the best looking Cayenne out of all generations they've made. And I know that opinion is very subjective and a lot of people don't like the look of the, uh, the first 955 generation of the Cayenne. But I just think it looks very purposeful and very SUV-like. I really like the way it looks and I really love the fried egg headlights at the front as well. But it's not just me that thinks this car looks great because when I've been driving this car around town, I've actually been getting a lot of attention. A lot of people look at this car, hopefully for the right reasons and not just because it's nice or... As for the comfort side of things, if it wasn't for these colossal 22-inch wheels, this car's ride would be sublime. I definitely recommend you go for the max 20 inch wheels or less. Moving on inside, we have double glazing windows like you get in a house, which gives it a very serene and quiet experience inside the cabin. We have multifunctional electric leather seats, which are as comfortable as falling on a bed of roses. We have heated front and rear seats. We also have a heated steering wheel. We also have cruise control and we have visor and lights. We also have a booming Bose sound system, which sounds very good indeed. 
parking sensors, front and rear, and they have this little meter bar to show you how close you are getting their beep very obnoxiously. And we have, like I said before many times, we have this gorgeous furry, furry headliner, which is soft as my rabbit's fur. This also has diff locks and multi-adjustable air suspension, so you can mount curbs to your heart's content. Overall, the interior is an absolutely lovely place to be, and the build quality is absolutely exceptional. There's only one part which is making me drive me mad um, down here, which is rattling, but I don't know where it's coming from. But other than that, everything is fantastic. Um, we got the fully leather dash is a joy to look at the stitching, and everything just feels super, super solid. Very sturdy Stuttgart's engineering here. And if you come down here, we also have some grab handles, and they don't flex and muscle. You wouldn't even need a tow bar, you could just literally attach your car to this and just tow it with the grab handles because I'm giving this a good old tug right now and I'm telling you it's not moving a muscle. Then the centerpiece of the interior that does it for me are the dials and the displays. So you have five dials and obviously in the center is the largest and it goes to smaller and then you have smallest on the other side. This is a very, very nice spectacle to look at, at night especially with the um, ambient lighting. As for the practicality side of things, we have some quite narrow door bins, but they're very um, deep and you can fit quite a few things in there. Uh, moving on to the middle, we have a two-way um, armrest, which you can fit quite a few things in. We have quite two narrow cup holders down here. Over there, we have our cooled air-conditioned glove box, which is quite spacious as well. As a practicality in the back, well, I'm five feet and a half, so I'm quite short, and it's no trouble for a car this size to fit me in the back. It's very, very spacious indeed. And you can also fit three humans at the back as well, and you'll be riding in very good pleasure. Come to the boot, and you have 540 litres, so it's more than enough for a family um, or a regular person, whether you're a family or not. As for running costs, well, this car is pre-2006, so the road tax is only a cheap and cheerful £360. Um, Fuel-wise, well, this is you're not going to get groundbreaking numbers, I'll tell you that for sure. Um, so in my ownership, it has displayed down here that I have averaged around 13.8 miles per gallon, which is it's quite horrendous and a bitter pill to swallow. However, the performance you're getting and the, the weight of the car is, well, it, you, you know, you weren't expecting any more, were you? And I have to admit, I have been driving it like a loony, and I've done a lot of town and spirit of driving, and not many uh, dual carriageway driving. I imagine if you were to drive this on the dual carriageway quite regularly, you could expect low 20s to mid 20s in terms of MPG. But when driving this into town, I have seen this dip into single figures. So just be aware if you are to buy this, you are in for quite a shock in terms of fuel prices. And with this having a 100 litre fuel tank, I roughly get around 350 miles. So yeah, you could probably get a bit more, depends how you drive, obviously. Coming to parts and maintenance. Now, this part is where I thought it would break the bank in terms of owning a Porsche or just a Porsche Cayenne. Um, obviously, they do have reliability issues, but the parts and maintenance side of the things is not too bad. So I took this for a minor service and brake fluid change at my local Porsche specialist. And it only cost me around 400 pounds. And I thought that's tremendous value considering it, it demands a premium having a Porsche badge. I also needed the front brake discs and pads as well as the brake pin kit and a brake pad wear sensor. And that came to a rather respectable 250 pounds. That's a lot cheaper than I was imagining. So yeah, in terms of maintenance and parts, it's not too bad. It's just obviously when things do go wrong, which can happen quite regularly on this generation of Cayenne, just to be prepared for quite a lot of builds. One thing we haven't talked about yet is its sound. It has quite a sumptuous soundtrack, especially inside the car, you do get a lovely V8 noise. On the outside, it's quite discreet, but if you do stick a GoPro next to the exhaust, it sounds like this. Very good sounding indeed, and I'm sure if you do get a nice exhaust on this or do a subtle modification to the exhaust, you can make this sound very brutal indeed. How easy is this car to drive? Well, it doesn't actually feel that hard to drive and it doesn't feel as big on the road as it does to look at. It, I don't have any problems with like 
looking around to see how much space I've got on the road. And it doesn't, it, it's big, but it doesn't feel that big. If it, it's quite a weird sensation. Um, visibility is also very good. We have very, very generous and large windows all around, so I don't have any visibility issues. As for getting your hands on one of these, you won't have to empty your wallet to actually buy one. Used prices for these go for around five thousand to six thousand pounds, depending on like condition, mileage, and so on. I would personally spend an extra one thousand or two thousand pounds just to get a nicer condition one and make sure a lot of preservative maintenance has been done to it. So yeah, personally, I would spend around seven thousand or eight thousand pounds to make sure you get a nice pampered one. Overall though, this car is absolutely excellent and this car has really exceeded my expectations in terms of ownership. If there's one thing I really would change, and it's probably the only thing that I'll change about this car, is definitely the wheels. If you are going to buy one of these, make sure you get 20 inch wheels or lower. If you get 22, you'll ruin it, honestly. Because the way this car rides isn't actually that bad, it's just a bit choppy. And just knowing it's not actually that bad with 22 inch wheels, imagine what it would be like with 20 inch or less. If you want to know more about the Cayenne and you want to watch more Cayenne content, then I've created a playlist which I've documented my whole experience with it. So I really ought you do check that out because there are some fairly fun videos in there I'd recommend watching. But anyway, that's going to wrap this video up. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do be sure to give this video a like and any comments are very welcome indeed down below. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.